Yeah, yeah. So, so I think we can agree that um, anyone who calls, who says an open face sandwich isn't a sandwich. That's just peop That's just chaotic energy. People trying to stir shit up. Welcome to If I Were King, the podcast where two friends somewhere on Earth talk about the New World Order and other things, including but not limited to the lizard people. Well, in other news, uh, daylight savings today. Yeah, yeah, that was that was great. The question great. is, uh, oh. how much did you hate yourself when you had to wake up at a different time than normal? And you go, fuck. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I woke up at like six twenty today, and I totally, I was like, yeah, it was pretty. Like when the alarm went off, it was so like, uh, so like a such a blunt awakening. Like, damn, that is uncomfortable. That was freaking Congress and Parliament. You have Parliament, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Explain to me, okay? <laughs> this is my American ignorance. What is <laughs> what is the difference between a parliament and just a congress, if you know it? They're the same fucking thing. Yeah. They're just, they're just different names. You guys have slightly different systems. They're like, people vote in people and they, you know, it's representatives from districts and fucking, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a federal, right? Like your Congress is federal. Our par, par, our par, our parliament is uh, federal. There are some provincial parliaments, but in BC, it's a legislature, not a parliament, or the provincial one. Uh, so it's the BC legislature. Yeah, that's it's it's like just the equivalent, just different country. Um, yeah, uh, I just don't know if there's like slight differences. Like people say, there are, there are. This is like in how it works and stuff. Like I actually prefer uh, U.S. C Congress because they. We kind of have like you know the relic of like British Parliament where people like just talk over each other and yeah. just kind of yell. Yeah, and it's the same. It's kind of like stupid. Uh, and like the U.S. Congress, it looks like way more professional and like you know you speak when it's your fucking turn kind of thing, and it's like looked down upon if you just like start yelling at somebody. Because every time you look at like sometimes on YouTube, I'm sure like I don't know everyone's on a different part of YouTube, you know. But on my yeah. part of YouTube. I'll occasionally see like, oh, the Tories and the, the whoever in the UK Parliament, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, no, it's pretty funny how they do. This yeah. is like more extreme. It's hilarious. Um, it's like, yeah, it's kind of funny. Their yeah. thing exists. Their Parliament exists to be a place where people yell at each other. It's yeah. kind of fucking awesome. Like I guess, like it's back hilarious. in the day, it kind of makes sense. It's like that's how they discussed. Uh, but you have a you have a you have a speaker, so you say, "Mr. Speaker, yeah. I would like to bring to blah 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 blah," and and then somebody responds to that person. They're like, "Mr. Speaker, that guy is full of shit." Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, anyways, it's kind of, it's like the most boring thing you could probably watch, dude. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. If you think U.S. Congress is boring, it's more boring in Canada. Anyway, that kind of brings me somewhat reasonably close to what I would do if I were king this week, Norman. <laughs> oh not finally not really I at all waiting. actually i was waiting for this i was, was kind of like looking for a connection to it and i don't really have one actually i'm just gonna fucking go for it so this week norman if i were king my decree of the world of the world of the world norman is that it would be illegal from now on to complain about a comedy show that you voluntarily watched <laughs> I love this Paul. I love this Paul. You already uh, like right, this. So please please expand. Please expand. Well, if you chose to watch it, you can't fucking complain about it. That's it. End of period, uh, you know, end of story, period. But why? Right? Let's dig into this. Yeah, why? Let's get into why. Let's you get into the why. Let's get... Fucking Have you been to a comedy show recently? Is that what happened? No, do you know about the recent Chris Rock show on Netflix and that? Uh, I've heard of it. Uh but I haven't watched it. So, point is, I watched it. My parents and I watched it, right? Pretty good shit. Laughed a lot. Was not offended. And it caused just a whole fucking outrage. Ooh, outrage. Everybody was outraged by it. And normal fucking comedy show. Uh, if you are familiar with Bill Burr's stuff, it's no more yeah. offensive. Love Bill Burr. Fucking love Bill Burr. Oh, the best. No more offensive than him, but it got m much more outrage than him. Like, you know, mm, he's... Of course. I feel like course. he's gotten away with not having that much outrage for his stuff, even though, like, he's 
as offensive, if not much more offensive than uh, Chris Rock was in this special. Yeah, pe- people don't understand. Like it's it's a it's comedy. They're not. They don't literally mean what they say. Yeah, they don't literally Even mean they what do they literally say. Mean what they say. They don't usually. It's like it's they're just telling a story. Yeah. Um, like Bill Burr's fucking gorilla story. <laughs> yeah. They're just trying to make you laugh. They don't have another goal. There's no, you know, they don't have some ideology that they're trying to uh, brainwash you with or, you know, something like that. It's just ridiculous. And my thing is like, listen, if you know that you're a sensitive person and that you're prone to being offended or triggered, it is your responsibility to check what that person's sense of humor is like before you go to the show. You can't just show up and voluntarily watch something and get really triggered by it because you didn't know what he was going to say. If you are a fan of comedy, you already know what the comedian, you know, what possible topics they're going to talk about and how they're going to talk about them. Like it is your and, and part of comedy is surprise is like they yeah. say the unexpected and that's part of why the science of comedy works is that you, you're about to say something there's already an expectation of what's coming next and then it's not what you expected and that's part of what makes something funny well, it's like ridiculous yeah you know yeah. Uh, like shock shock they're just sh- yeah. what's called yeah. shock jocks like they purposefully mm. say things that are as provocative as possible because for some people that's hilarious like it can it, sometimes something really offensive to some people is really fucking hilarious and if it's not to you just don't go to those shows like don't cancel shows cancel it by not fucking going don't ruin it for other people or try to ruin the comedian's life and their career because you got offended about something that you voluntarily watched like you did that to yourself Nobody else is responsible for that. So to kind of divulge more information about what happened here, to be Please fair, divulge. the difference between <laughs> between uh, like Bill Burr and Chris Rock in this case was that Chris Rock talked more shit about like specific people and like specific celebrities uh, to be. Oh, exact. celebrities are fair game. Celebrities, yeah, are fair they're game. fair game, and that's kind of the other point is so. In this case, like, a lot of the outrage was about that, about the celebrities that he talked crap about. And it's Hmm. like, well, A, right, Uh, these celebrities put their lives in the public eye. They chose to do that. There are celebrities out Hmm. there that don't put all of their private personal information about their relationships, about everything else out there Hmm. and flaunt it to the world. These people put this shit out there. Like, Mm -hmm. you are fair game. Just as you said, you're fucking fair game when you do that. If Mm -hmm. you put stupid shit about your private life on Facebook, you did Mm -hmm. that. Nobody else is responsible for that. Like, nobody else did that. You chose to put your private shit on a public profile. So It's called social media. Yeah. Social it's media, social, and it's media. Yes, exactly. Like it's... So, man, people are just tiring in that way. Anyway, it's it's. Was there something specific that really just uh, was it? Was it somebody in his show that uh, that like freaked out at him, or was it like just the reaction to his just the pu- like pu- public reaction to his just, uh, his show? Yeah, just more like public reaction and social media. And people and just like like going on fucking Instagram or TikTok and shit, just like raging about it yeah yeah i mean like yeah yeah you remember <laughs> you remember it was him who got slapped right yeah, yeah 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 so like he addressed that finally you know it's been a year and he addressed that and people are raging about that it's like why did you wait a year to you know to address this and it seems like a good amount of time to let things settle you know you know, if you just start joking about it next week, maybe he's like, okay, well, it's kind of fresh. And now it's like, now it's history. So, you know, you can make a joke about it. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. And also, like, fuck it. If you made a joke about it the next week, it's fucking public. So, fuck it. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's history now, you know? It's it's like the Holocaust. It's fair game now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you can 
Jim you're gonna, you're gonna get cancer now. <laughs> <all right. laughs> Probably. <laughs> I I want to know um, how would you implement this uh, as as ruler, one man power, yeah, dictator. I, I gave some thought to that. Yeah, of course. Um, and my proposition, Norman, is a re-common sensification school that they are forced to attend. <laughs> okay, okay, but like, how, how does one have to be forced to attend? Tell, tell me the process. Well, I go, to, I go with uh, a friend of, of my friends and then one of his, and their friend, my friend of a friend is also with us. And then they, they stand up at a comedy show and they're like, bitching about something. Yeah. And then what right. happens? They stand up, they make a scene. What happens then? So, like, you report it to the police, right? If you're sick of that shit, you're like, fucking <laughs> piece of so shit. So it's like, a, it's, it has to be like a, it has to be reported in, you gotta, <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, like, the police show up, so this... <laughs> and they arrest this one. <laughs> and yeah, they... What I imagined was like, you know, because like, comedy shows have security, uh, because it's a comedy show, and there's usually alcohol. And I usually mean, they walk those people out anyways. So how I imagined it, they get walked out and then they get transferred over. I mean, that could be good too. You know, I didn't give it too much thought to the mechanism. <laughs> yeah, like, I, like, I gave it some thought, but not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Approximately. Yeah, so uh, they get transferred, right, to the police or the police show up, whichever comes first, you know. But also, I mean, the other thing is I didn't give too much thought to that because there's also just online people who are insufferable and they need to be remedied also so <laughs> oh i see i see you, i see so like a public outcry so i guess like yeah. the stand up at a comedy show that's like pretty straightforward like hey you're not allowed to do this if so punishment and that's like pretty easy to understand and in context but the uh the one you usually want to get is like those online people well oh, that's both. a tricky one dude it's both like um mm. it's the people in person they can be carted off by the police and the security guards you know but also, people online need to be identified <laughs> and uh, their public identity be, <laughs> be identified. A lot of so online can... monitoring in your, in your government. <laughs> right. And uh, they're publicly identified and they are captured by the police <laughs> to, be, <laughs> to be sent to a recommon sensification school. And... <laughs> Basically, the core tenets of it are they learn to take responsibility for their emotions and mm. that, oh yeah, like nobody triggered you, you did by exposing yourself to something that pissed you off on purpose, voluntarily, okay? So don't purposefully trigger yourself. Outrage is bullshit. You chose this. Also realize that, like we said before, Comics may be just trying to be prov provocative because that's some people's sense of humor. It doesn't mean they actually agree with that or that they're trying to brainwash you or have some ideology that they're trying to promote in their show. They're a comedian. Like, that's their job. They're trying to make you laugh. If they don't, oh well. But you chose to go there. So, and also, you probably wouldn't fucking do better as a comic. So, especially without saying some offensive shit, or doing something provocative. Like, you try, bitch. Like, let's see where this goes. Let's see if you can do better without being offensive. Not that many people can. Y your government is pro-cancel, canceling, cancel culture. Pro-cancel, cancel, canceling culture? The, 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 they're pro-canceling, cancel culture. Right. If I were king of the world, we would definitely cancel, cancel culture. That shit is unacceptable. <laughs> <laughs> fucking unacceptable to censor in my country <laughs> we're gonna censor you for censoring them <laughs> basically yeah so <laughs> anyway <laughs> just gonna ignore that <laughs> yeah so no but it, it was a funny show norman i mean we laughed most of the time i would say there was a good ratio of time we spent laughing to time you know, the total time of the show, like pretty good ratio as comedy shows go. People want to watch it, they got to go watch it. Go watch Chris Rock. It's pretty good. Yeah. Like, you can see this is less offensive than 
like a kind of run of the mill Bill Burr joke, like uh, you know, there's an epidemic of gold digging whores in this country, or the other classic one where he's like, "There's no reason to hit a woman," and he goes off and lists all of the reasons, many reasons why there is a reason to hit a woman. <laughs> like, <laughs> so you can see this is a way less offensive show. He just threw some shade or some fucking commentary about celebrities and so everyone's right. Oh, and that's what people were pissed off about, dude. Man. Mostly. Be, uh, I mean people. People be people be people and weird. I mean there was probably some other stuff just because of, you know, oh, this was offensive or whatever too, but I think there was outrage mostly about the celebrities and then also about, you know, some offensive shit or whatever. So so, so the lesson behind this policy change is that people should let it uh should let these jokes that they don't agree with roll off, just roll off like rain. Either that, or do your research and don't go to shows where somebody has a sense of humor that's incompatible with your level of sensitivity. Like, if you're not okay with, you know, jokes about Kim Kardashian, then fucking go to Bill Burr. Like, you're going to find more offensive shit just about different things. <laughs> but... You can find some very PC comedian. They're they're out there, man. They're out there. Like, you, you know what they say, man. If you can't handle the rain, uh, get a rain jacket. That's right. I always used to say, if you can't handle the fire, get out of the fucking furnace. And uh, <laughs> Paul, and um, if I were king of the world, um, I would eliminate umbrellas. Shit, damn. That's no more umbrellas, Paul. It's controversial. <laughs> what's what's your what's your uh, hatred for umbrellas? Why do you ask me, Paul? No, no. Where's this stem from? Is there like a specific incident where an umbrella hit you in the head or something? You know what I'm saying? Detail. So I hear, I hear you asking me why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why, Paul? Well, because they are the worst way to stay dry, Paul. But you wouldn't understand because you're a desert dweller. That's right. right. <laughs> Okay, but I, um, I've only bought one umbrella what? in my life, and it was in Europe. <laughs> uh, I want to know from you, uh, as a non-umbrella user, um, why would an umbrella be a good idea? Flip neck, huh? I don't know. <laughs> flipping, flipping heck. Look at you. Look at you. Flipping heck. Get out of here. <laughs> I don't know, Norman. Well, I mean, I see the obvious potential for utility, but I haven't really used one enough to know if it actually works, so. Yeah, well, I'll fucking tell you how it works. I'll tell you how it works. It doesn't. It doesn't even make <laughs> pragmatic sense, all right, on a, on a regular just day-to-day, -day, all right? They, they float above your head. They, right. they block some rain. They keep your head relatively dry. Not completely, just relatively. But only if the rain is not coming at you sideways, all right? <laughs> <laughs> and they also completely <laughs> ignore the rest of your body. It doesn't do anything. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that yeah, seems so about like, right. E even though they, they guard your head a little bit, it, it doesn't do shit for everything else. You sacrifice everything else for a little bit of uh, keeping your hair, trying to keep that dry. Everything else gets soaked regardless. Right, right. I mean... And Paul, do you know, and since you, you wouldn't know this, Paul, but um, the worst part of using an umbrella is your umbrella-holding hand. Mm. <laughs> that is un it, 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 it's the one that gets cold and wet no matter what and you just suffer <laughs> sounds like you need some mittens waterproof mittens yeah yeah but then your mittens get wet waterproof mittens that's what I said yeah but they, they, that's not many like yeah, you think you think people are fancy like that they're not alright <laughs> I figured that you, like, jungle dwellers, <laughs> you jungle, jungle dwellers must, <laughs> I mean, relatively to here, Vancouver's a fucking jungle, so. <laughs> well, it's a rainforest. We, are, we are in a rainforest over here, but uh, right. let, me, let me tell you the curious thing about rain umbrellas, right? because I believe they are a city-only phenomenon. How do you feel about sunbrellas? I don't give a fuck. That's not what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm explaining to you this. All right. So as you may know, 
as you do know, I've had the uh, wonderfully terrible, unfortunate experience of living in Can two of Canada's <laughs> rainy cities, uh, that being Vancouver uh, and Prince Rupert, which right. uh, is Canada's rainiest city, full stop. Not the rainiest place, but the rainiest city. Right? Don't come at me. Uh, rainiest city, Prince Rupert. Rupert has 240 days of rain per year out of 365. Fucking wonderful. Hell. Vancouver has 192 on average per year. Lovely. Lovely. <laughs> Terrible. Okay? It's fucking garbage. Uh, while obviously I grew up and now again live in Vancouver, umbrellas are pretty common for some reason. While in Prince Rupert, they do not exist. What do you make of that, Paul? I think they know their shit, Norman. I think they fucking oh, figured fucking... it out. They did fucking figure it out, Paul, yeah. right? Nobody uses an umbrellas in Rupert. I'm not even fucking exaggerating. Like, they don't, full stop, don't use them. Yeah. Because you know what? Umbrellas suck at doing their job. Yeah. Which is keeping you dry. They do not. Like you said, there's a really important loophole, which is that, I mean, ideally, rain would fall totally vertical. There's this thing mm. called wind. and Yeah, yeah. And there's a thing called literally moving. Moving, yeah, yeah, yeah. Into the rain. Into, into like it's, it. It's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So, like, not an exaggeration. In Prince Rupert, nobody uses umbrellas. I, like, I don't even remember seeing That's one in a fucking store, bro. Like, <laughs> every local <laughs> just wears proper rain gear. Like, a good rain jacket with appropriate pants and shoes. And, you know, everyone is happy because it works. Yeah. You know, the jacket hood does what the umbrella wishes it could. Which is keep your head dry and yeah. keep your body dry. <laughs> so is there a time that's not that rainy or? Uh, like in Vancouver, which is yeah. uh, the summer, three months in the summer. It goes from raining all the time to fires. Yeah. Sad. <laughs> <laughs> but Paul, but Paul, why would I want to eliminate umbrellas? I can hear you asking, Paul. Well, let me tell you. It's because they're, quite, they're actually quite the disposable object. Uh, especially like in cities. People buy and lose umbrellas exactly like they buy and lose water bottles. Mm. <laughs> like, you j they end up everywhere, especially like the small ones that you, you know, the little small mini ones. Um, they're made of like cheap plastic and aluminum. They also break super easily. Like if it's a windy day and it like gets like folded inside yeah. out and just like the, the metal just snaps. Or honestly, you just put it in your bag and like you take it out weird and it breaks. That's, that shit happens all the time. Super common. They're like quite a waste. So, you know, on, on like the pragmatic factor, they're, they're just kind of a waste of resources. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like there's a kind of good aesthetic, right? Social fact. You can hold it for a woman or something, you know? It's kind of cheeky. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> I, had, I had like, this is honestly the only time I've ever used an umbrella is like on a date. Because apparently yeah. that's what people do. Uh, right. You just said it. So I'm not crazy. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm, I don't even fucking need an umbrella ever. But uh, yeah, I know it. Yeah. It, it must be true then. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I think, I think it'll, that will be controversial for some people. Um, but the social, social factor I want to explore, uh, explain is this is based on my experience as a tall person. Okay. Yeah. Umbrella using people tend to just not give a fuck or are completely oblivious to the world around them. <laughs> they are in an umbrella bubble. <laughs> an umbrella. <laughs> I will explain. Yeah. These these uh, these people in their umbrella bubble, they just I don't know, like it just it become they become blind, they become I don't know. I don't know what's going on over there. Yeah. They're in their own world and they're just like hitting people left and right with their umbrellas. <laughs> like right in the face <laughs> or just like bumping into people and they're like, oh <laughs> oh, and, and and I know this very well because it's at eye level for me. So I'm trying to keep my eyes intact. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I I wonder if there's an advantage to umbrellas for shorter people and a disadvantage the taller you are because it's like, you know, the horizontal. As a pedestrian. <laughs> as a pedestrian. Oh, yeah. In terms of not getting hit in the face, there's definitely an advantage to being shorter. But I mean, using an umbrella, is it more effective the shorter you are? Because there's less like, you know, there's less of... I, th I think it's, I think that proportionally it's the same. But there's like less total angles for it to hit you 
horizontally, right? If you're shorter. You, you might have a slight point there, <laughs> but I don't, I like, I think that would just be like going to the extremes at that point. Like, <laughs> but like, think about it, right? <laughs> I'm about to say I'm thinking some about bullshit. It, so if you were like grasshopper height though, right? You can see why there would be yes, an advantage. An umbrella would be a dome at that point and you would be inside. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, <laughs> but let's say that you're still the same width girth. <laughs> Then it would it would still be very advantageous to be that short. Are you saying wear a plate? You you become a disc. <laughs> Basically, but you can see how it would be advantageous to be grasshopper height. As yeah, if you were a plate, to... yes, I, I agree. A bl- a bl- an umbrella would be great for a plate. You know. <laughs> yeah, you can see the advantage. So, Norman. If we yeah, scale yeah. that up, yeah. do some fucking trigonometry, right? <laughs> I think that there are less total angles for the rain to like hit somebody who's shorter under an umbrella. Assuming you, the same you might size you might have a umbrella. slight point there, but I don't think it's um, <laughs> statistically like relevant. You know, uh, <laughs> I don't know. My other point, you know? my other point is that it's part of this like this um, their umbrella world that they're in. Right. And it's kind of something ridiculous. So, you know, you're in the city, you're downtown, it's kind of packed, and the people who don't have umbrellas are going under awnings, right? Because yeah. they're just getting out of the rain for, yeah. like, whenever they can. You know who goes under the fucking awnings, too? People if they're fucking umbrellas. <laughs> <laughs> like, wide open, they don't close them, they don't put them away, they just take up the whole space with their umbrellas yeah. while hitting everyone in the fucking chest and face. Right. <laughs> fucking. I, it's... And I, I've never seen such a social menace. <laughs> menace. <laughs> menace. <laughs> Fucking umbrella wielders. <laughs> and, just, and just like the hypocrisy, right? They're like, they're using an umbrella undercover. <laughs> You're like, the first thing I will do to clean up the streets of Gotham is to unravel the fucking umbrella wielding menace. <laughs> right so that that's my edict today is that it's a it's a very simple one to implement as like a dictator yeah you know all i would do is blanket man blanket manufacturing ban done those resources go somewhere else where it's <laughs> we're saving plastic all right we're saving the environment like umbrellas are just not great right. they're, they're just too disposable and i'll be like you know what just invest in one fucking good rain jacket yeah. i can give you i can give you a brand it names with um shelly handsome that rhymes with that okay is there no way people if you 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 live in a dry place you wouldn't know no (laughs) i have no idea yeah uh um i'm I'm sure people get angry because they're like this is ridiculous well i'm sorry but um i'm putting my foot down and um you're just gonna have to cry you're on the wrong side of history here (laughs) rain jacket wins 10 times out of 10 you're on the side of the fucking umbrella wielding menace (laughs) (laughs) you're on the wrong side (laughs) yeah interesting what do you do about all the umbrellas that are out there do you reimburse do you you know what i'm not gonna i'm just it's, it's a blanket ban of manufacturing and i'll just be like listen I, I, I'm just going to let them die naturally. I don't want to make a big fuss about it. So people will be like, I'm going to use my umbrella till it dies. I'm like, great. Then you're not wasting shit. People will judge you. Maybe you'll feel nervous about using it because they're banned. You'll feel self-conscious about your umbrella. So, you know, I'm already pissing off a lot of people. I don't need people getting up in arms over umbrellas, you know? So I'm just yeah. going to, I'll take a hard and a soft stance. Like I just stop, stop it at the source and then just let it die out over time. Right. Cut the snake's head off and wait for the snake to yeah, die. Yeah, exactly. At, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. I fucking love it. I fucking love it. I think it's brilliant. It's kind of like prohibition, right? Like you're gonna get the uh, umbrella smugglers going. You know? How do you mm-hmm. how do you mm-hmm. deal with that? Umbrella smugglers? I yeah. Mean, <laughs> the, 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 I think that's more easy to enforce. Is it's, it's illegal to make it, so therefore I just go after manufacturers. See, I go after the dealers, not the people using. The uh, users. <laughs> uh, we'll be back right after this. Hey, 
And we're back. Paul. Yeah. Is toast a type of sandwich? No. Tell me more. Explain. Explain your reasoning. Show me the work. Toast requires a minimum of two pieces. Or I'm sorry. A sandwich requires a minimum of two pieces unless you can fold the bread in on itself, which toast can't do, assuming you toast things like a normal person toasts things. They become un unfoldable at that point, which means that you can't make it into a sandwich. You could call it like a open-faced sandwich, they call it, or uh, something like that. So that's kind of a loophole. Is it a loophole? Yes. Is toast okay. a sandwich on its own? No. You have to put shit on it. At what point does toast become a sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> if you... These are the real questions I'm asking, Paul. Right. If you add right ingredients to it, in such so a toast way... toast and butter. You put, you put butter on it, what is it? No. No, it's toast. Okay. If you add... Question. This is what I... Hold on. If you add materials, ingredients, I should say, in such a fashion, in such a way, that it is traditionally practiced to create an open-faced sandwich, then it's a sandwich. Okay, all right. So I want, but, but here, so an open face sandwich to you isn't a sandwich, right? Are you saying that? Is that correct? Am I understanding you correctly? I, I rescind. I rescind. An open face sandwich that was made, designed to the style of tradition and custom in the design of open face sandwiches is a sandwich. But toast with butter on it is not a sandwich. Okay, cool. So that's a parameter. But what do you mean traditional style in, in a set? That, what the fuck did that even mean? That, <laughs> <laughs> it's just a fancy way of saying, is it an open face sandwich? If it is, it's a sandwich. <laughs> okay, so, so my question is, so I just want to, before we continue this conversation, all I, this is more of a thought experiment, and I just find it really interesting. I'm not going to try and convince you to change your mind or anything or any listeners' minds. I'm just... I. I started this, and it's just really interesting to get into it. So, Paul, my question to follow up is that. So, if you add peanut butter on toast, is that a sandwich? Is a peanut no. butter sandwich? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> because peanut butter, much like butter, is... Mm, I'm going to be mulling. Okay, what about a peanut butter jelly food? sandwich? If you put peanut butter and jelly, it's now a sandwich. <laughs> okay okay and it's open-faced right it, it's now just okay. an open-faced peanut butter jelly because yeah, that's pretty common to do at home right you know a little or saturday breakfast toast? a little peanut butter jelly fucking hell it might be toast <laughs> it might just be toast i don't know <laughs> <laughs> okay how about this a blt open face that's definitely a sandwich hmm so you're having trouble between the two and three. <laughs> yes. Your initial instinct for peanut butter jelly was it is a sandwich because of tradition. Yes, there's a tradition. I don't know. I don't know, Norman. So is the limit two? Is the limit two? Remember my definition earlier was if it was made, designed in such a way that traditionally, customarily, <laughs> I'm being very long-winded, <laughs> customarily, it would be called an open face sandwich, then it's an open face sandwich. I don't know. Are PB and J open face sandwiches a thing customarily, traditionally? I would say that I mean, it's like a sandwich. Home, probably. I don't ever eat a peanut butter jelly sandwich. I'm not that white, Paul. But I just... Really? <laughs> really? You don't eat PB and J? Mm -hmm. No. Like there there has Fucking... been peanut butter in my house. There's been jam, but there's never been jelly. Fucking sacrilege. Also, there's never yeah. Fucking sacrilege. Yeah. Living in North America and hasn't eaten a PB and J. Fuck. <laughs> I know. I've, I like. I've had like a peanut butter with jam on it. Like I've had that. It's just it was not a it was not a staple of my household growing up, okay. at all. Um, okay. He was I'm gonna hate. But anyway, so Paul, I want to say so you get a little bit of context. You're, you're having a little bit of a, a crisis of knowledge right here. You're like, is two piece is two ingredients a sandwich? Well, 
It can be. I think it's just about tradition and custom. Yeah, that's very broad and like uh, it's like a pol- polit- politician answering a question. Uh, <laughs> this can be interpreted in any way depending on what you mean by what. Um, but anyways, Paul, I put in the fucking work to find a to find, have a relatively nuanced, relatively nuanced answer. So, I got some Instagram polls. I got my coworker uh, to help me out as well because uh, she has more social media game than me and more actual friends. So that helps to get more people. And I put on, on Instagram, we dual posted, is Instagram a type of sandwich? Yes, no, neither. That's what it was. Yes, no, neither. From, from, from my poll, uh, I got zero yeses and 11 noes. 100% noes. Yeah. Um, mm. Okay. Uh, and then I asked some other people over their WhatsApp and stuff like that, and I also got noes. I was like, okay, interesting. Um, there's another one I'm going to get to wrap around later. That was an in-person, sorry, my coworker. She, um, she's got way more reach and she got, uh, seven yeses and 66 nows with two neithers. And very interesting. The question was, is toast a sandwich? A, t- a type of sandwich. A type of sandwich. See, that's where... I think there's some injustice there because it needs to be is an open face sandwich a sandwich, right? No, but I I deliberately kept it open because um I like I like when people start thinking about it, they're like, oh toast. Well just toast with butter, no, and then they're like, well, bread is made of toast. When does it stop being toast? <laughs> like when is a sandwich like a sandwich is made of toast you can toast bread most most sandwiches have toasted bread so when does it stop being toast i fucking love when does it stop being toast and start being a sandwich <laughs> oh anyway, anyway so by the way yeah uh I, I didn't actually tell you my stance i believe toast is a type of sandwich i think it falls under the category of sandwich toast in and of itself or toast that's used I, as an. I think it's a sub. It's a, It's like a sub. Like the 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 main. Like if you think of it like a family tree, of all the breads and stuff, <laughs> a sandwich. Toast is a type of sandwich. Right. Like it's a proto sandwich. It's that's a, how I think about it. It's a proto sandwich. You know? So if, yeah. If if I like took, without without the toast, there is no sandwich. If I took a piece of bread, right, threw it at you, mm-hmm. and you caught it, right. Mm. And then I threw some tomato slices. Mm. And you started yeah, delicious. putting... Tomato sandwich. Right. Wait. Wait. You started... But you're not done. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> you put the tomato slices on. I haven't given you all mm. the ingredients for the sandwich yet, right? Tell me. So that's a proto sandwich. I'm already calling it a sandwich. You're already calling it a sandwich or is it a proto sandwich? Yeah. No, no. Did the bread... Like I, like, I was just like, if you're thinking of human evolution... The, the, just the bread, the toast is the proto sandwich. And then you, it just evolves into something more advanced. So some people do, you, okay. How about that? I have something, this is very modern I, or trendy, I guess. Is avocado toast a sandwich? No. A type of sandwich. No. Why not? Because it's just bread with a topping. It's not a sandwich yet. It's but, like if you just put butter or just peanut butter, it's toast only. It's not a sandwich yet for me. Okay, what if I throw some feta cheese on top? Of the avocado? Yeah, like you go to a restaurant and you have you order avocado toast. You don't yeah. just get toast and avocado. It's a type of sandwich. It's under the sandwiches section. <laughs> the section. You know, when it says like burgers and sandwiches on the menu, and then you see avocado toast. Okay, this is just a very, I mean, there's so many layers to this. Like, if you do the same to bagel, right, a bagel, right, is this sandwich? See, this is good. Nobody uh, nobody has actually talked about bagels yet. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like, I think just for getting out of control, and then people are very, very protective of bagels. I think, you know, especially East Coast people, you know, like New Yorkers, Montrealers. Uh, I feel like we should avoid them because they'll get angry. And I fear them. <laughs> I fear them. <laughs> I, I fear the the bagel wielding menace also. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> so, uh, would you like to hear some quotes that um, sure. that um, yeah. my coworker? Yeah. She got some some answers from her poll because she has friends, unlike me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's hear what her friends. I, I, I picked say. out a few that uh, she sent over to me because she thought they were funny. Um, quote. This doesn't even look like a proper sentence. I had a minor brain malfunction trying to read it. <laughs> <laughs> so, quote, hear me out. If it's like a straight up toast with some butter, there's no way it's a sandwich. This person's on the same, same wavelength as you. But, like if you put some nice cheese and some avo, maybe a slice of turkey, some sprouts, that, is, that could arguably be an open-faced sandwich. Right, right. So same wavelength of view, right? This seems yeah. like this seems like the median, you know, this seems like the the average person says something like this. Yeah. I mean, that's because if you right, if you want to get really technical and we plucked into I don't know if you've done this yet, but you know, pull up your Oxford dictionary or Merriam Webster or whatever and search sandwich. Oh, I, I, I I already know where you're going. Please finish and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna disprove you. Well I want to continue. No, I just I'm just saying I haven't done it yet. But, oh, okay. you know, but uh, so okay. Certain, but on that on that yeah, wavelength, yeah, some people have said to sandwich as a verb. Yeah, that is to put something between two things. But I think that's easily dismissed because first of all, the word sandwich is relatively modern. There's the common food myth, like the the Earl of Sandwich invented the sandwich, which is obviously bullshit, and uh, it's been disproven by so many people. I don't, you don't need to hear it from me. Like, it's just like a food myth. Like, like the comparison is also like a super common one. Is modern pizza was invented in New York City? Like, wrong. Uh, yeah. Believable for half a second, and then you're like, wait, no, a second? What? what? <laughs> people have been eating sandwiches for like since bread was fucking invented. So <laughs> yeah. So here's another problem, right? That we need to investigate which is mm. right you said do you believe that bread that's not toasted is a sandwich then you know what i i kind of have so this is really important how do you make bread you mill wheat into flour and you mm -hmm. make it into a dough make a dough and then what do you do you bake you it. put it into an oven mm -hmm. and then that's cooking it you're toasting it you're toasting it Okay. All bread is toast. <laughs> oh, all bread is toasted, which means <laughs> you're like, all bread is technically toasted. So all of it is bread, is sandwich. You just toast and toast a little bit more. You're toasting some toast. <laughs> so it's the act of the toasting. See, because I was going to say, like, you know, like, is dough a sandwich then? No, because it's no heat has been added. I don't know about that. Yeast, yeast, right? Uses yeah. heat. And that's how the bread rises, or the dough rises, uh, does stuff, it, isn't it? Well, I mean... I don't know enough. Yeah, I, 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 like, I, I know what you're saying. It, I, I, temperature's a factor. I don't think it's... You can, <laughs> you're making an interesting point. You're making an interesting point. Because you can, you can like, ferment something. you add like, the like, yeast. Like, <laughs> no, no, it's good. It's good. Because yeah. if you let, like, temperature... Is a factor in bread, right? Like you can, yeah. if you leave it for two hours at room temperature, it rises, or you leave it overnight and it rises slower. A little bit of different fermentation, that kind of thing. You can cold ferment things. You can ferment them at things, but I just don't think that's the same as, um, you know, using an oven or toasting it in a toaster. I think that's that's passive and not active. I think that is key. <laughs> you can disagree, which is okay. I just, what are your thoughts? <laughs> Passive heat addition is not toasting. <laughs> because there's um, what do you call it? Uh, like cooking. a exothermic reaction. It's not. Yeah, no, it's not even an exothermic reaction. You know. I don't uh, know, but it would be endothermic if heat is added to it, right? Yeah. yeah. Is it? Hmm. Yeah. What do you call it if you like? Like yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess you can control it, but you're not. At, yeah. Interesting. Interesting. That's an interesting thought. I would like to. Um. I would like to put a point in that and say that is up for debate. But I in 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 my opinion. No, but I like how you thought. Yeah, I like how you went down that road, and it's very interesting. <laughs> but I'm gonna say no. I think that yeast adds heat, so I'm gonna say yes until proven otherwise. Okay, I mean, yeah. it just makes my point. You're still agreeing with my point at this point, so <laughs> I'm not agreeing with your point necessarily. I'm just saying that heat was added, and so I think that you need to agree with me now. 
<laughs> that, 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 that that dough is toast. That dough is toast, and toast is a sandwich. <laughs> and so I don't agree. This toast, begs... is a, toast is a sandwich, but dough is not toast. <laughs> Dude, this just begs so many questions, though. It's like, See, this is okay, such you know an this important is... stopping point. Not stopping point, but... Okay, so Paul, well, I want to read you one more quote. Yeah. It's on, Let's and then it. I, then I have, then I have another quote for you that I asked an expert. So let me, let me, so we, we've kind of had the middle ground quotes here. I want to go to the other end, the extreme end saying, quote, no, in all caps, <laughs> a sandwich implies something is sandwiched in between two of the same outer casings, oh. lol, like bread or tortilla, or I would even accept a lettuce wrap. You can get a leaf of lettuce and it can be like, it's a sandwich. In response to being prompted, what about an open face sandwich? Quote, that's not a sandwich to me, to me, TBH. That's bullshit. Thank, that's, pe that's people being weird. That's fucking cheating. That's fucking cheating hard. Okay? A sandwich is what history and tradition and custom has identified to be a sandwich, which includes open face sandwiches. So you, sir... Or wrong. Yeah. <laughs> or or you, you've been told. You've been told. You've been anonymous told. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. I don't know. Think what you and, fucking uh, want. My favorite but... one. Yeah. My favorite quote here is um quote anyone who thinks a piece of toast as a sandwich is a sociopath. <laughs> Are they, man? I mean, we've fucking uncovered some shit right here. I think there's a there's at least a valid point of view about this. I don't know if you're right, but there's a valid point of view. So, Paul, I'm going to share you this, uh, this on-the-spot interview. For context, for the people, what I'm trying to convince. Yes. <laughs> context is a sandwich is traditionally a piece of meat between two slices of bread. But there is a modern invention called an open sandwich where there's no top piece of bread. So they're aiming for an avocado toast or even a peanut butter sandwich without a top. It's all a sandwich, just in, called an open sandwich. And you are a professional? I, yeah, we just, I, I sell sandwiches for a living, so I should know. <laughs> so toast is a type of sandwich? Toast, if anything's on it, is a type of sandwich. 100%. What do you think? Bombshell. Bombshell. This is, uh, this is Patrick. He's the owner of a local cafe that I frequent to work at. Mm. Gotcha. So his quote, toast, if anything's on it, it's a sandwich. Anything. Yeah. I that guess, means, you know, that includes butter. so much of this is becoming or coming down to semantics, though, because then the question is, is toast a sandwich? No. Not unless you put shit on it. Mm -hmm. See, and that was the professional guys. We, you heard it firsthand. That's right. You heard it firsthand. Yeah. We got we got a perspective from a pro. Yeah. 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 So so I think we can agree that um, anyone who calls who says an open face sandwich isn't a sandwich? That's just peop that's just chaotic energy people trying to stir shit up. Yeah, that's BS. I mean, the sandwich is in the name, open face sandwich. Yeah, I was raised. I was raised on the open face sandwich, bro. That's what the Polish people do. We don't do the two sides. That's what I was <laughs> going to say is in Europe, like open face sandwiches are drastically more common than in the US and Probably Canada. That's too. just what a sandwich is to me. You know, growing up, I'm like, that's a sandwich. Yeah. So this is where the controversy came from. But yeah, I think... Yeah, so uh, it's a little bit of culture stuff, too. A lot of people, like, you know, especially like in Canada and the States, they're like, a sandwich, the first thing they think of is two slices. Yeah. Yeah. And then you say an open face sandwich, and then they're like, oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Right. Let me have a rethink over here. I think... Uh, I'm going to say, ultimately, though... Based on the mm -hmm. way that this was word, the you know the problem statement was worded, is toast a type of sandwich? No, on its own, toast is not a type of sandwich. You have to put something on it for it to be a type of sandwich. And I can respect that. And I can respect that. Yeah. And I will be extreme and say toast is a type of sandwich. <laughs> I. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, all I want though is um, honestly, uh, our listeners just to just let us know Instagram, Twitter, email us 
I fucking, I want to hear more opinions. And I want Tell you guys us. to go in detail. I want you guys to break it down. Please. I want you to figure out, so if dough, first of all, A, is dough a sandwich then? If toast is a sandwich <laughs> because heat was added to it, and bread is a sandwich because heat was added to it, and dough is a sandwich. I want to add to that. Yeah. If you guys know farmers, if you guys know, you know, pastry chefs, people who own cafes, <laughs> I'm like, I want to know. I want to know all the extremes. Like, I want to know what a farmer says. I want to know what a wheat farmer says. You know, the man who grows it out of nothing. That's what I right. want to know. Is so get to it, people. Is the wheat itself a sandwich? In fact, tell us: Are wheat berries sandwiches? <laughs> Proto. I would love to, if somebody says yes. I would. I want. I want them. I want, I them. want to fucking know the explanation. Please, <laughs> please elaborate. Give us the deets. The dirty deets. <laughs> I'm still recording. <laughs> I poop rocks. <laughs> I poop rocks. <laughs>